get moving. Thank you yeah, so much. No problem. Have a good one. Keep it meaningful. Got it. That was fantastic advice. Thank you so much for speaking with us. I want to say thank you so much for speaking with us. It's a pleasure. Thank fantastic. You All right. Got it. Fantastic. Thank you so much for providing this advice. You got it, man. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That, yeah, of course. I hope to see you all out there. Um, you all are the future of tech talent, so hope to see you in the job market soon. So really what I want to do here is I want to give our students an idea of what companies are looking for most precisely. So who do I have with us right now? So, hi, I'm Tracy. I'm the founder of Make It MVP. We are a collaborative community for career transitioners into tech. So all of you boot camp grads, we're your first place you should go right when you graduate. Okay, so what is the most common mistake that recent boot camp, boot camp graduates make? Oh, I have a good one. Um, so if you're a UX designer and you just graduated, the most common mistake you make is being stuck on the system. And if you're a developer, the most common mistake is going into tutorial hell. You do a tutorial after tutorial after tutorial thinking that you're building portfolio projects, but you're really building the same thing over and over and over again, and it's not worth it for you. It doesn't help you get hired. It's actually a detriment to you because you get stuck watching videos and thinking videos are the best place to do things. Got it. So, th so they get caught like basically reproducing things that are not differentiated in any way. What can they do to stand out instead? So getting on real world projects. So things like the Make It MVP Launch Academy honestly is the best place. I'm going to promote us for two seconds because I got to, but we are a six week accelerator that gets you on a real project teaching you how to build an MVP and a cross functional team, but also just find startups that are looking for some work and apprentice for them or help them or offer free labor honestly, yeah. like get on a real project as soon as you possibly can. Got it. One thing I've observed is in-person events like this make such a big difference. Like you go up to a table, ask somebody for a job and they're like, sure, yeah, do you qualify? Okay, cool. See you tomorrow. It's like, oh. Okay, yeah, guys, get moving. Thank you yeah, so much. No problem. Have a good one. Keep it meaningful. All right, everybody, this is round two. Who do we have here today? Hi there, I'm Karen Lavernia. I'm the vice president and senior partner at Lab22C, and I'm the facilitator for the Miami Tech Talent Coalition. Got it. So what we're trying to do here is give our students an understanding of what are the next steps after graduation, right? Because building tech, while not easy, is straightforward. There's a path for it, it's very obvious. It's like, you build this, right? Introduce it to users, build this next step. But this, could you, could you pan around just for a little bit? <laughs> Alyssa's getting tired of me. This is very complex. This is about as complex as things get. This is the interaction of human beings yep. in a complex environment. What does somebody do? Where do they start? Okay, first of all, uh, walk into this room prepared and confident. Anytime you're coming into these spaces, just make sure you feel good about yourself, you feel good about your skill sets, and obviously that your LinkedIn, your resume, those practical things are ready to go. They feel good, you've had a few people review them and give you advice on them. Second thing I'll say is just keep in mind that you as the person seeking a role, you have the power in this space. These recruiters are here tabling for hours because they need you. So come in here as a valuable asset to the space. You should, that's why you should feel really good about you. They, they are uh, seeking really talented people that can build tech, but also really talented people that want to build a career with them. So keep that in mind. Got it. So come prepared, streamline the process. They should just be able to scan a QR code and know everything about you. Exactly. Right? That's step one. Exactly. Second part is don't discount your own ability. Thank they you. want you. Is that I right? I love how you summarized my commentary. That's amazing. All right, go on. Yeah. I, I want to make sure I'm tracking you. Yeah. So now that we got those two points, where should we go from here? What are the actual physical steps? Now, one thing that's really interesting is people will hear that and they'll think, oh, okay, but like how? Okay. And, and you'll think, that's a ridiculous question. What do you mean, how? Just do it. No, but the yeah. actual logistics of it for somebody completely outside of, for somebody who completely doesn't understand what they're doing, can actually, <laughs> not to be harsh, yeah, not to be harsh. Oh, I was going to delete that part. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll edit that one out. <laughs> but what, what should they do next? Steps. Right. So first of all, obviously for Geeks, you have an infrastructure to support you in your career transition and use that. Two, use the people in your cohort as your community, right? Make sure you're building relations. I know you're building tech and tech is awesome. There's a reason why we're all here, but your community is really critical and important as you make this transition. You don't want to just get a job. 
You want to find a career, you want to find a community in which you'll be accepted and be able to grow. So practical things, use your 4Geeks community, but also Miami is full of resources that can sometimes be hard to find. So I'll give you a couple little tips. One, follow Refresh Miami. They're a platform for tech and startups to find jobs, get connected to talent, and also just read the stories. What companies are opening? What companies are scaling? What companies are getting into their Series B who might want tech workers? That's one. The other thing is look at your big corporate uh, companies, right? Like, you don't necessarily have to get a job in a tech company. You can go look at our cruise line industry, our aviation industry, our train and logistics industry, and find tech jobs. If you want to get your foot in the door and start, start there. And then obviously follow Miami Tech Works, follow the Miami Tech Talent Coalition, and follow all the higher ed institutions on social media because they're constantly posting about resources available for job transitioning. All right, everybody, who do we have here today? Hi, I'm Johannes Quiles with Miami Tech Works. Just to shorten that up for you guys, to shorten up the very short introduction, this guy organized all of this. Alyssa, can you pan the, can you pan the, the screen there? Yeah, look at that. And pan up to the ceiling. Look at the beautiful lights. <laughs> this guy, this guy installed every single one of those lights up there personally, right? Isn't that true? Uh, well, not so much that technical, <laughs> but we were certainly part of the team that was putting together this event uh, to help create career pathways for students in technology. So we're glad. He to won't accept the credit. He's a very humble guy, but I swear he did it. I swear. Now, can you tell us a little bit about what our students graduating from Four Geeks Academy should do to succeed in their career moving from this point? Certainly, you know. Four Geeks Academy is such an incredible partner of Miami Tech Works and the Good Jobs Challenge. And students who are participating in that are coming out of that with a preparation that will make them ready for careers. Uh, not only for people who don't know what to study, but also for people who are switching careers. So what they want to keep in mind as they move forward is to make sure they have their resumes updated, their LinkedIn bios updated. Uh, we want to make sure that they're getting in front of employers as much as possible, getting internships uh, to get their foot in the door, and then making sure that they stay engaging with these employers by connecting with them on, on these social media platforms, uh, as well as with communicating with them via email to follow up. It's really important. So what do you say to the student who's like, you know, I don't really want to go to those events. I'm, I'm pretty technical. I've, I've d displayed online how good I am. Why do I have to go to these in-person events to really make progress? You know, I always say with the career search, with the job search, it's always a marketing plan. No one's going to come find you if they don't know who you are. And so that is why you have to take advantage of every single platform that you have to let the world know, hi world, I'm here. Or as the coding people like to say, hello world. You know, that's essentially what these platforms are for. Right. What I found that's so fascinating, but really obvious upon reflection, is that humans are susceptible to charm. And if you just go out there and engage with people and be a person, really, just ask for something to a person. Keep in mind, the person who is eventually going to hire you or not hire you is a person. So if you find a way to develop those soft skills, seek people out in person, it makes a massive, massive impact. Our table's calling us, I think. Look at that. But yes, Isaiah, to your point, uh, it's certainly uh, something that people can't forget to do. You are a person, and the people who you are meeting with are also people. And so it often helps to break the ice by commenting on something you see at the table, commenting on some sticker they're wearing on their clothes. Um, you look for any one of those engagement points so that the employers can feel like they can relate to you, rather than just you know, introducing yourself and then letting that conversation fall flat. Try to have a story prepared. And not, don't just tell the beginning of the story, tell us the outcome as well. What was the result? And did you finish the project? Even if it's not quantifiable with a number, there's a way you can say, we reached our goal by finishing the project. That's also a really important way that you can engage with people, knowing how to tell the right story. Got it, let's wrap up real quick. Remember, to build amazing things, but also to step outside of the cave, step outside of the lab. And Alyssa, if you can pan one more time, come out to these type of events. Look at all these people, look at all these opportunities right there for you. I wanna say thank you so much for speaking with us. It's a pleasure. Thank Fantastic, all right. All right, everybody, who do we have here? Kevin Robinson, a project manager for Miami TechWorks. Um, I'm the employer liaison. I played the leading role in making sure the right employers came here. Um, I'm glad the students are enjoying it. How may I help you? 
Hey, man, I just want to say before we hop into it, fantastic event. The tables are absolutely deep. Thank Infinite you. options here. If you go out and make the effort, you can get a job. Now, for our students here at 4 Geeks Academy, what advice, or let me back up. What mistake do students make oftentimes when they're graduating and looking for a job? Let's start there. Not networking, um, internships. I'm realizing that a lot of students just wait too long to go on internships. You think you want to know what you want to do, but I always say everything has its thing about it that you don't like. So you need to know if whatever career you're into, are you willing to deal with the things about the career that you don't like? And so you learn that by taking internships. And um, you need at least two, I always say. I say three is perfect, but at least two. And then from there, you'll kind of have a good idea of what you really want to do. Got it. I've noticed there's so much there's so much that happens in the in-between, right? In the actually being in person, not just trying to do things online. Getting intimate with people, right? Like talking to them, getting to know key details. What okay. do you think about that? Yeah, so speaking with employers, because as I said before, I'm like the employee liaison. So I'm always talking to the employers, building their relationships. The number one thing that they say is so, uh, soft skills, which I don't really call them soft skills. I'm going to call them people skills. Um, being a human being, as technology enhances, becoming a better human being is going to naturally become more important. Um, it's always been important, but technology is solving our problems more. Now it actually is, okay, I really need to like this person. Yeah. I really want to be able to speak to this person. Um, I want them to come into work. You know, <laughs> you know I want yeah. them to actually work. Um, I want them to be pleasant while they work. You know, I want them to be able to work with the team and solve problems and, and you know, just have really good social skills. Yes, that's, that is the number one thing employers are asking for from the current talent pool. Not technique, human development. Got it, so let's do a quick takeaway, right? So we got internships, we got- Absolutely. We got so I'm gonna speak on that. Okay. Um, when I became the project manager for this, that was actually the number one goal that I wanted to have. So 90% of these companies are offering internships. That was actually part of their onboarding process. If they were not offering internships and jobs, we, um, it's not that we weren't for it, but I I it was important to us that these students and people who have graduated all came here with an opportunity. Mm -hmm. So your first, second year, you can get something. And then if you graduate, there's something here for you as well. Got it, got it. So internships and soft skills. Do the in-between steps. Take yes. on the role, study do groups. it. That's another one, study groups. Form a good bond with students. Um, it, it makes a really big difference on who you create your relationships with now. And it does have a lot to do with your future because later on, when you need to level up or you move out or you, you, know, you move up in life, your, your friendships are gonna play a big role in that. Hey everybody, who do we have here today? Hi, my name is Terri Ann Brown. I'm the director of Miami Tech Works. So Miami Tech Works is actually an initiative founded by the EDA, the Economic Development Administration. About three years ago, they set on a proposal for $500 million. They wanted communities to identify what is the leading industry that's gonna create high paying jobs in your community. Miami chose technology. Why? Because we are one of the fastest growing areas that companies wanna to come to. And many companies want to hire locally, but we needed to identify where are the companies and where are the academic institutions that can train people in technology jobs, and then where are the companies that can hire those folks in high paying uh, technology jobs. So we're thankful for the uh, Department of Commerce uh, that is funding this institution. It's allowing me and my staff to work with really cool uh, companies and with academic institutions like Miami Dade College, F Florida Memorial University, FIU, OIC of South Florida, Brain Station, Iron Hack, 4 Geeks that are designing some really cool technology programs. Awesome. So can you talk a little bit more specifically about the, the things that you do exactly so that people can get a sense? Because obviously your organization has massive scope. Yeah. So maybe a precise example would help somebody understand a little more clearly. Yeah, absolutely. So the number one thing that we do is we lead the Tech Talent Coalition. That is what brings employers and academic institutions to the table to talk about what exactly are the barriers when it comes to the tech talent ecosystem being able to identify what are the skills, competencies that people need in order to get hired, and what are the barriers that we need to remove 
to prevent that hiring from taking place. So we hear from a lot from employers that they want tech talent to be ready. Does that mean in technical skills? Does that mean in being able to communicate, present, um, show up with good uh, communication skills, data analytics skills? So we get that information from employers, we take it to the academic institutions, and sometimes we say, let's create a unique program that meets the needs of both. Uh, we have a small business capacity building program where small businesses can post a tech job, like building a website or designing a CRM or maybe a UI UX design. And then students can post that they want to work on those projects and they get paid through a micro internship program. So they get up to $300 to complete one of those projects. That's fantastic. So you can think of it maybe as like a Swiss army knife, getting accomplished whatever needs to get accomplished in order to get people in high paying roles. Absolutely. And the number one thing that we stress is that employers need to engage with these training providers early and often. And what does that look like? Talk to an upcoming person that's transitioning into tech by doing job shadowing, career workshops, come to an event like this, the Tech Talent Summit. We've got resume reviewers here that represent the industry. We've got people from Kaseya, we've got EMED, we've got support services from Career Source South Florida. Mm -hmm. These are all employers that have given up their time to review the resumes of people that are looking for jobs in tech. And why do they do that? Because they know it's really important to number one, give back, but they also want to be able to engage with tech talent and get them early. Because if they see somebody today that's like, wow, you've got a great resume, I'm looking for somebody with your skills, maybe they're going to pluck them up right, right there and then today. So you would say it's very much positive sum. If, if the companies do their part, they're more likely to get high quality employees. Absolutely. You, you hit the nail on the head. Absolutely. And that's what we're seeing. If an employer is engaged with the training provider, they're going to see the best and the brightest right away, and they're going to be able to hire them before that talent even has to go to the job market. Awesome. Awesome. So if somebody wants to get involved, how should they find this resource? How should they engage? First off, they should definitely follow our Instagram, which is Miami Tech Works. Um, they should see there the events that we have coming up. They should definitely follow the uh, training providers. So if you're part of Miami Day College, uh, Brain Station, Iron Hack, 4Geeks, FIU, um, FMU, make sure that you're connected with your career services department. If you're thinking about transitioning into tech, talk to definitely one of those training providers. They can provide you with the resources that you need to get a high paying job in tech. And if you are an employer who says that you're struggling to find talent, I guarantee you there is talent available for you. You just have to talk to Miami Tech Works or any of those training providers. We can get you the talent that you need. You know, here at this event today, I can't tell you, tell you how many times I've overheard people in conversations just like kind of serendipitously trading information. Hey, we're hiring. Oh, you do that? You know, it's interesting. Come to in-person events. Do things in the real world. Don't just, you know, exist in your little, in your little cave. It's important that you come. That was kind of mean. But I really want to hammer home this point because I can't tell you how much happens in the in-between. The in-between, right? Like the gray space. Yeah where things happen, people are in motion, go be an actor in the world. And I don't mean an actor in the sense that you're pretending to be somebody, but an actor in the sense that you're doing things, you're acting.